big storm today, so you might hear that outside. The last video we did on the CRV, we put Tacoma headlights on this. And the way we did it is make, making mounts inside and then building a fender piece, fender extension to match the shape of the Tacoma headlight. That's almost done, but it still needs to be body work. I'm not there yet. That'll be when I get ready for paint. I still have to make a piece that follows this line because we have the old headlight line right here and we need to make a piece, an extension for the hood that extends it down. I don't know if I'll do that in this video because today's video is about the front bumper. I'm gonna build a tube front bumper for this thing. I've gotta decide if I wanna get rid of this kind of factory structural support thing or not. I'm not really sure if I wanna build off of it or get rid of it entirely, I'll decide. But the first thing I'm gonna do is bend up one long piece of tube that kind of matches this contour. We're gonna hide some of these bolts and stuff from this light up to the fender and all the way across to the other side. Um, that'll be the hardest bend to do. And then from there, we can kind of just build and, and get creative and make something that looks really cool. I have no idea what this thing's gonna look like. I haven't made a plan. We're just gonna kind of roll with it and see what happens. nerve-wracking part. We either did this right and this bar that costs like $40 is good or we did it wrong and uh, that's bad. Let's see if it fits. insult to fabricators everywhere but that tool is awesome that is awesome it looks great um it's going to rotate up something like that but i can't hold it there right now there you go bin number one's done that's the hardest one now we just get to build all the fun stuff oh well, can we at least get a mm -hmm. bit bed do you want to see what's in your room I should say I have all the tools and I very much enjoy building stuff out of tube, but I'm not very good at it. I've had a lot of practice, well not a lot, I've had a little practice. I'm just not that good at it. Um, and what I've got to build is the final piece of tubing for this. Well, we've got two more, but this is the final one that I've got to mirror, so it's hard, it is the lower triangles for the bumper. I already did one, spoiler alert, it went poorly. I think I can salvage it, but the welding is gonna be difficult, which is not great. Um, but I'm gonna try again and see if I can do a little better this time. But first thing we're gonna do, I've got a piece of tube, it's probably about two feet long, and I'm gonna put a 25 degree angle in it real quick, and then I'll show you the problem. Now let me show you the part that's hard and that I've never really gotten good at. You can see I have the bumper jacked up, and that's to twist this main hoop. Uh, I did get a little bit of a twist on it when I was bending it, and I probably should, should have just paid more attention to angles, but it's not too bad, but over the course of you know 10 feet, 
it ends up being a good bit of bend. So I've got it tensioned up. There's actually spring in this uh, bumper right here. And it's gonna have to stay jacked up until I connect this piece with this triangle down here. So we're gonna make a triangle. Now I don't want it to just go straight because that's boring. And so I've got this 25 degree bend and we're gonna put it in something like that, somewhere in there, either here or cut off coming in like this. I think it's best though to kind of wrap it, bend it around this frame rail. I'm gonna bend this in actually with a hammer. Um, these openings are gonna get covered with sheet metal and uh, or plate steel maybe, we'll see. Um, but they'll get covered with a bolt-on piece of metal. Uh, it has to be bolt-on because my mounting screws are back here. So we'll bolt this on and then to take the bumper off, you have to pull this, this section off, and unbolt, unbolt, and the, bu the bumper will come off. Um, I do have one of these that I built already just by trial and error. So I'm gonna grab it. We'll transfer some measurements over the other side and it goes right there. And from there, it looks good. But if you get up close, you'll see there are loads of gaps to fill. So I will probably, I will probably remake this bar if I can figure out how to make it better the second time around. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and transfer like the lengths to this and, and I guess the angles. That way I kind of have a good idea of where to go from there and then we'll start cutting and hopefully make it right this time. If you've ever worked on tubing, you have no doubt run into this problem. Regular hole saws just are not long enough, and so when you do angles through tubing, you end up having to cut it into like a seven step process. The video you're watching actually took me eight minutes to make the hole saw cut, because the hole saw is just not deep enough. The guys over at Rogue Fab put me onto these deep saws. Deep saw did send me these, and I am very excited to use them. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a deep saw, which means I should be able to make these angled cuts without having to remove the saw, cut some metal away, run it again, remove the saw, cut some metal away, so on and so forth. stuff on my phone and uh, the battery blew up so you guys didn't miss much but I did go ahead and finish weld everything I gave it a coat of texture black the welds look horrible um, but that is a testament to the lack of fitment I, I just haven't had enough practice it's been a long time since I uh, have welded and it shows all right, I've got these things assembled. These are from a company called Nylite. You'll see a lot of Nylite stuff on this build because they sponsored the build. So they carry all kinds of stuff that we'll kind of work through. And anything I use in this video, I'll post in links below. It's all Amazon, so you can use Prime and all that. Really convenient. Um, we've got huge wiring harnesses for these. They connect directly to battery power, so they must be pretty bright. We will deal with that in a minute. First, we've got to get them mounted. So I want to go four wide, kind of as like, a, like my grill. Um, I think it'll look super rad, but I just need to know how much space I need because I'm going to bend a flat bar or bend a bar and then kind of bend it around, rotate it around the lights and down to the bumper we just built. It looks like we need about, oh, we can go ahead and start radiusing it. So 21 inches looks like the width that we need, which I think is going to be a really good size yeah for the front grill so we'll basically make like a bullnose type thing as our front grill fill it with light and uh, then i'll show you guys how i'm going to wire them
right, so I'm in the middle of welding the bumper and mounting the headlights, and I wanted to go ahead and get the wiring done on the car side. Now, right now, the headlights are wired in with wire nuts. That was just to test, and I've been driving around with them that way, and they worked pretty well, but we can't leave it that way. It's a fire hazard, probably, uh, and it's just going to give me problems going down the road. So I'm going to go ahead and do this more permanent. Now, one of the issues is I've got DRLs on these driving lights. There's no DRLs from the factory in this car, so I'm going to have to come up with something um, to maybe create a relay or something that goes to my headlight switch that will cut these on. I have some like signal lights and stuff, like like uh, marker lights, but I, there's no power to them. And so I'm not sure what's up with that. Couldn't find anything on the internet. So for now, we're going to go no DRLs. We'll just have headlights and turn signals. Uh, and then I'll show you what we're going to do with our bright circuit. Um, what I have here, though, is another Nylite product. You guys know that you've been watching the channel. Uh, you would know that I love Deutsch connectors. Uh, that's these. They're waterproof and they will take an amateur wiring job and make it look really professional. They come with the seals in it. That's why I like these. Um, on some other connectors, you have like the little grommet thing you put on the wire and then the wire in and then crimp and there's a lot of, of spots to mess up. And so with these, you just crimp the uh, ends on, which they give you plenty of, and then uh, plug them in and it looks really pro and um, they're, they're just really, really great. So the only thing you need is this kit and some open barrel crimpers. I'm not sure if Nylite sells these, but you can get these on Amazon as well. So I'll link those below. But I definitely, if you do wiring in your car, I definitely recommend getting this kit. I mean, this kit's awesome. I've been buying them individually, but they get really expensive. You can buy this whole lot, it's way cheaper. Um, but it just makes your, it makes everything so much better. I mean, everything you have to wire it's better. <laughs>
Oh, can you see it? I think it looks cool. I haven't looked at it yet. All right, there we go. I think this thing looks awesome. We are gonna block off this section here. I'm gonna get, I think some laser cut aluminum maybe for that. And then a steel skid plate that goes down and wraps up underneath so we can slide over rocks and things without having to worry about uh, breaking up the oil pan or transmission or anything else that's kind of vital underneath the uh, kind of subframe area. Um, so those will be coming later, uh, but I've got to make a big order from Sin Cut Sin and a bunch of laser cut stuff. So. I'll just throw that into that order for this car. I've got a bunch of stuff I want to get laser cut for it. Um, so that'll be later on down the road, probably like final touches kind of things. These will get blocked off. I think it'll make the bumper look a little more complete, but I'm really thrilled with the shape. Um, hindsight, probably would have wrapped these things all the way underneath and mounted them at the bottom, but first build, first time doing a tube bumper like this, it's I'm happy with what I got. We're gonna do it again on the rear, so I should be able to do a much better job. Uh, I learned a lot about coping and getting everything to line up. My welding mask, I can't see out of it, so I gotta figure that out. Um, but other than that, I think it came out pretty good. All right, so this is my um, fog light, spotlight harness that I made. These connectors that come on the harness are Deutsch, uh, what do you call it, Deutsch two prongs. So that same kit that I showed you earlier, I used pins from it to shorten these. So these are all custom links. You can't mess up the plugs. And uh, I also alternated them so that if one of the relays goes out, either my two outside wire lights will stay on or my two inside lights will stay on. So it'll still look like normal if one of the relays, leap relays fails. And we'll still have a pretty good spread of light. Um, this fishes down back behind there. These are my two relay plugs. Um, and then, let's see, the only other custom little part is this. This wire right here feeds the relays a signal and it plugs in to what used to be your bright signal here. So when you flick the brights now, instead of turning on a second filament, it turns on these four lights. All right, it is now nighttime lights are looking rad and I got my wiring completed so if you look right here those are the new terminals I was talking about you can add a lot of accessories to them which is good so if I run like a winch or something we'll probably need to upgrade the battery but we can run it off of that the harness runs down and to the lights the question is how bright are they all right, so this is headlights, significantly brighter than factory. I wish I had a factory example, but I didn't think they were going to be that much brighter. And then this is the spotlights. Ultra bright. That tree that you can see back there is probably 75 yards away. 